Hi. Uh, steering arms almost complete. All the components have been made. Um, just need to finalise the exact length. Um, can't really do that at the moment. The wishbones are still <coughs> out to be welded. So uh, once they come back, then I can finalise the exact length of what this is. Obviously, tube. This is a threaded left-handed threaded insert point, uh, and then this end is just tubed in at the moment. You can see it's just sliding through it as we speak. <coughs> so it all needs to be finalised on the length, and then I can get it welded. Um, pretty happy how this uh, yoke or clevis turned out. Um, gives me probably way more adjustment than I actually need, um, but I just wanted to make sure it was strong enough, it was as well in excess strong enough, so it's um, it's good, kind of happy. So, turn buckle here, like I said before, rod end in there just to finalize any um, uh, track length uh, of the rack itself to make bumpster adjustment a lot easier. Um, so, I have to worry about the rack height or in and out, you just just track length itself, and to be honest, that dials out bump steer way faster. Um, obviously, hard to do in a normal thing because that's fixed. It'd be threaded up the stop, so apart from spacing out and machining the rack, that's about all you can do. And obviously, that's kind of finite if you start hacking the rack away. So, uh, this is a lot simpler and quicker way of doing it. Um, well, maybe not simple, but it's quicker. <coughs> So, yeah, steering in, plenty of room, as I said before, around here, and a full bump. We've got plenty of this, this other rise, obviously nowhere near the right position because there's no suspension, but, but you get the idea, so. <coughs> Hopefully, I can start on the second one of these today and get that pretty much finished. Uh, I've turned both of the left-handed threaded inserts there, and obviously the rod ends at the end are all right-handed, so. There you go, it's the last couple of days. Um, on a secondary note, I uh, um, may have picked up a car build, um, or at least a chassis, rolling chassis build. <coughs> um, gentleman in question, um, seems quite keen to uh, start a 962 Porsche, uh, Le Mans replica build. So, um, He's a taller guy and needs something with a bit more room. Um, like me, he also loves the 917, but um, it's just physically it's easier to get into, into a 962. Uh, so it looks that's the way we're going to go. Um, get the plans hopefully this week uh, for the chassis, and then I can do the CAD sims on the chassis, um, put it in. Uh, obviously a 962 is very low, the car itself is, is normally only two inches off the floor. This one obviously will be designed from day one as being four inches ground clearance. Um, but you know, if you look <coughs> at the front of here, you know, four inches there is, is a nice figure to be going with. Um, for a race car you're going to be lower, um, but for a, an all out ever designed to be 962 Le Mans car, obviously two inches is fine by them. But 55 millimeters, I think, is the original ride height. We really need to raise that about an inch just to make it even close to resembling working on the road. Um, so it gives about 18 mil or something like the front, and we may be something closer to where we need to be. Uh, so, wheel diameters to think about. Uh, make sure the car doesn't look too wide. We don't want to raise it up too much, then make it look stupid. So, we shall see. We need to. <clears throat> need to do some uh, research on that. So, um, gentleman that's selling the body uh, has CAD, has, has uh, basically 2D dimensional uh, plans for the chassis itself. Uh, it ends at the rear bulkhead, so basically from the back end, um, basically from here back, um, there are no plans. Um, there are some dimensions for wheelbase, hopefully. Um, but the body itself will donate everything. I will have to design the whole back end. <coughs> Probably end up redesigning the rear upright slightly um, and then modifying that to fit on the front. Um, so the uprights will be roughly the same. Um, and then we can go from there. <coughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, 
could be fun. Uh, obviously, funds are limited for me to finish my car quickly. Um, if I can spend 12 months working for this uh, uh, customer, um, then basically I should have enough funds really to get this car done. Um, there's a few things I've got to change. Uh, oh yes, one good news. Um, the Holly Dominator ECU uh, that I was been looking at the last couple of weeks, um, it does seem as if that Holly Dominator um, may work with uh, one of the dashboard options that uh, I'd like to use, uh, the latest Autometer LCD dash. So we have it confirmed yet, it's not been launched, uh, but I'm hearing from um, people in the know that it may work with the Holly system, which kind of makes sense because they're both American. One's there, it's, you know, uh, <coughs> I've had a reply back from Holly, it definitely doesn't work with my AIM uh, MXL Pro dash, which is kind of a shame. So um, if I go down the Holly route, then it won't work with that dash. So <coughs> decisions, decisions. But I really do like the Dominator's um, wide, uh, a closed loop wide band uh, and learning facility. So it basically makes it way much nicer. Um, and having the ability um, to run speed density or alpha n um, on a closed loop system basically means I don't have to worry too much about altitude changes. If I leave a 10 to 15 percent learning ability for the ECU uh, and running in closed loop on wide band on some sort of wide open throttle, then it wouldn't matter if I'm at the bottom of Pike Peaks Hill or the top of Pike Peaks. It should um, auto correct. Um, for any uh, differences in barometric pressure, which is one problem you have if you go speed density fueling, you, barometric pressure changes don't, the ECU doesn't see it quite so much and therefore it's hard to prove it out, which is why everybody likes to go and <coughs> uses uh, um, a normal style um, mass airflow or you know, volumetric efficiency style tables with corrections for, uh, for, for barometric pressure. Uh, so. Uh, but most racers want to use speed density. Um, yeah, the pros and cons for everything, I don't know. I'm still not, I'm not completely into that yet. But um, having the ability for a closed loop, wide open throttle, um, and, and it'll learn. You, it'll learn you can put 100% correction on the table. So if it's putting a, an ounce of fuel in, this thing will put two ounces of fuel in if it needs it. So you only have to be within a 50% ballpark of the figure, and it will actually correct it. And the, the finer the tune you go down, then you can tell the thing, well, okay, only correct by 10% or 5% or whatever you want. So um, <clears throat> most uh, narrow band sensors, um, when they're in closed loop, which is generally not when they're wide open throttle, um, will correct within a 5 or 7% figure. Um, and then generally when wide open throttle, I don't know about the latest OEM, but a lot of the older stuff generally it knocks out of closed loop and goes to a, a fixed table when you go um, uh, full uh, full throttle. <coughs> but uh, twin wideband centers and this on the Holly Dominator is awesome. Um, everything's on it apart from traction control, and I understand why that's not there. It's due to some regulations that they can't sell it to certain people in certain classes of racing in the US, so it's an external box, and that's the only reason it is. Um, it controls pretty much everything that I want. Uh, plenty of PWM outputs if I need to uh, have things movable. So I really want to go Holly Dominator. Um, uh, I can probably sell my DTA S80 Pro for, I don't know, about 900 quid. Um, they're about 1,000, 1,100 pounds new, so this thing's never been touched. Um, so I can pretty much get about 1,500 bucks for that. And the Holly Dominator's only 18, so, you know, it's not that much more. Okay, it's more for the traction control, but <clears throat> that I can buy at a later date. Um, but we've got to wait for this thing, for the uh, um, Autometer LCD dash to come out. Uh, I think it's been used in NASCAR already. Um, hopefully it'll be sometime this year. Which is cool, I can wait for both. Um, hmm. Anyway, I'm blabbing. So, um, <clears throat> I shall post some pictures of the, the autometer unit to get you some idea. Um, and basically, end up with a few pages. And what I'd like to do, similar to the uh, um, how McLaren, I think, pretty much in, in Pagani is probably the nicest way. You have the screen. 
itself, so that's your LCD display, and you have a great big rev counter in the middle and loads of gauges around the outside. Um, so to make it look less than just having a computer screen in front of you, uh, Pagani did a lovely kind of billet machined kind of binnacle for the, for the gauge. So you basically see like a round piece here with some offshoots of, you know, <coughs> uh, tying to hold the aluminium piece into it. So basically it made it look like a bespoke dashboard, but really if you take all the facade away, it's just a, like a seven or nine inch computer screen. So what I'd like to do is that, build my own dash in the virtual land, have it working and then just put a, an overlay basically over the top of it to make it look more bespoke, more one-off, and, and obviously I can machine aluminium, uh, a very reduced charge. Okay, so there's me blabbing way, way past the limit. Um, hopefully soon we should be on the floor. I was hoping this weekend, but it looks like it's going to be next weekend now, hopefully. Fingers crossed, get the wishbones back. Um, and then we'll start uh, probably building a 962 chassis um, very soon. Okay, speak to you soon. Bye.